let's take a step back and see the events that led up to this moment. Hello everyone, and welcome to the show! My name is the Hybrid Fox, and today I'm going to dive into the waters around the Tobaric Islands. Diving in, we see the most common fish of Benton, the jait. Specifically, the blue jait. The blue jait swims in schools of 15 to 20, and feeds on aquatic insects, shrimp, and most species of sprout. Jait are 19 to 21 inches long, and weigh 4 kilograms. But jay aren't the only fish here. Species of Lurmox are here too. The golden Lurmox glides along the tops of coral with its wide fins, chewing on algae, nibbling on sponges, and eating smelt. Another species of Lurmox that lives here is the horned Lurmox. The horned Lurmox lives in symbiosis with anemones, and within anemones lives with the white banded anemone fish. They most often stay in the safety of the anemone's toxic tentacles, but both have to go out of the safety of the anemone to search for food. The horned Lurmox eats many species of algae, but is primarily predatory, eating several species of sprat, smelt, sea snail, angelfish, and sea cucumbers. Their roommates, the white-banded anemone fish, eat small crustaceans, mollusks, plankton, and algae. They can grow to be around 3-4 to four inches, while the horned Lurmox is around 12-13. to 13. The anemone fish is oddly similar to the clownfish that you have on Earth. I'm actually suspicious that it's the same species. But there is a predator on the reef. The crested Lurmox is a 24 inch or 2 foot long predator with twin spines on their head. They eat most things in the reef but consume mostly Lurmox, starfish, and most of all, crustaceans. But one species of Lurmox escapes the crested Lurmox using speed and agility. Coral Jumper, or Fanfan Lurmox. And if all else fails, they can glide across the surface of the water with their wide fins. Kind of like a flying fish on Earth. A little bit further east, the reef dips off into a whole other ecosystem. Jait swim in this area, but so do the Sanju, another common fish of Benton, that has a variety of species, including the small reef dilling Lemon Sanju, or the slim Sinuric Sanju. But the species I'm covering today is the Craig Stalker Sanju. The Craig Stalker Sanju is a predator of this area, eating jait, squid, lobsters, mussels, and crabs. So to avoid the Sanju and other predators, the molefish burrows into the ocean floor, eating creatures on the seafloor such as small brittle stars, crustaceans, and sea snails, and other burrowing creatures such as the sea mice, gardener worms, and grub eels a shiny, light green fish that burrows into the seafloor. Yes, a fish. Although it's called a grub eel, it is actually a long fish, similar to sand eels. Small prey fish that are also food for molefish. But some predators have found a way of digging up the molefish. The hognose eel uses its nose to shovel up molefish to eat, and use their nose to find them under the sand. Hognose eels don't just disturb the sand to find molefish, but also to build their homes. Hognose eels make a dip in the sand and place rocks down in the hole to make their home, sometimes digging up molefish in the process. The apex predator of the reefside clearing is the mudback or burrowback shark. It also digs up molefish to consume, using specialized ampullae lorenzini to sense large groups of molefish underneath the sea floor. Its name comes from the mud or technically mushy sand, that collects on its back when it digs into the sand. Sand that other creatures burrow into. I have heard stories recently about a giant yellow squid crashing ships on the haze wave sea, so I'm going to dive into the ocean to see the cause of all this calamity. The haze wave sea is a portion of the ocean that constantly has a thick layer of fog covering it, making sailing through it quite challenging. And without further ado, let's dive in. This is a fog hunter shark. They can grow up to 275 centimeters long, but this one is quite small. 
likely not fully grown, so I'm gonna let it free. Now, the fog hunter shark's eyes may look odd at first, but its eyes stay the same size as it grows, giving it the odd look that it has. While the fog hunter shark can sink ships while in a frenzy of other sharks, fog hunters have been here a while and, and these reports have only surfaced recently, so I must be missing something. Going deeper, large black kelp is on the sea floor, but this isn't kelp. This is a shadow kelp fish, and its large fins are filled with chloroplast to turn sunlight into food, as the only other form of feeding they possess is a filter mouth, only capable of feeding on planktonic organisms. Sometimes they're in the sand, and sometimes they're swimming around, and while swimming can reach speeds of 45 miles per hour or more while fleeing the fog hunter shark. Something about the fog hunter shark is that it is a species of mako shark. So don't be confused if I refer to it as the Fog Hunter Mako continuing. Speaking of continuing, shadow kelpfish can accelerate to great speeds and hurl themselves into the sea floor with great force to dig into the sand to camouflage as kelp. But it's unlikely that it would mistake a boat for the sea floor. So this one's also out. I feel a small fish whoosh by. Examining it on the surface, I see that it's an Ataki kelp shear fish. This small fish, despite its triangular teeth, is a herbivore, only feasting on kelp, though sometimes taking bites out of shadow kelpfish. One of the main reasons it doesn't stay in one place for too long, the kelp shear is also primarily nocturnal, and stick together in schools of anywhere from 12 to 17 for safety, and sometimes do use their sharp teeth for defense, in the form of small nibbles. And if some kind of disease was going around, altering their brains and confusing them, I don't think their teeth would be up to it anyway. It appears something is out of place. This smiler reel has come all the way from the dark reef, in between Tobar and Dojako. It gets its name because most of the creatures that live there are nocturnal. The smiler eel is one such creature. A large yellow eel with light black spots. And when I say large, I mean it. The smiler eel can grow up to be 5 meters long, but some species can only grow to about 4. Its bulging black eyes are useless, rendering the creature blind. But its mouth is really unique. Inside the smiler's mouth, its teeth are scattered within, and often fall out. Its teeth are for shredding fish they consume, but they mostly use their mighty jaws to eat lobsters and crabs, and their crunchy shells tear the sides of the eel's mouth, giving it its name. Kind of like the Glee Mouth Scubbler. Huh. Shadow kelpfish also live in the Dark Reef, along with smiler eels, thriving with larger species, and some have bioluminescence. Some more things about the environment of the Dark Reef. There are two biomes. One is the Stone Maze, a shallow biome with a floor of hollow stone, with intertwining crevices and tons of hidden species that I don't even know about. And the other is the debris field, with plenty of coral and plants for small fish to hide from larger species. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to be notified for when new information about Benta is shared. And share this video with your friends to let more people know about Benta. Remember to leave a comment down below to let me know what aspect of Benta you would like to see next. Bye!